Hey everyone, Charles here. And first of all, thank you for stopping by my podcast. If this show inspires you, makes you think, or gives you that courage to jump into action, please help by donating to this show. Click the link in the description and donate. Your donation helps us with production and finding great guests moving forward. Thank you and enjoy. Amazon is offering sign-on bonuses up to $1,000. Plus, get up to $20 an hour for select roles. The best part? We're hiring near you. So start now to take home something greater. New, higher wages with a sign-on bonus. A range of real benefits and career growth opportunities in a top-rated workplace. So earn more and see how great pay and sign-on bonuses can lead to a greater life for you. Go to Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. Good morning and good morning and good morning to you, everybody. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another episode, a special episode of The Jump. Yes, we're bringing you something different and something new. And I just want to make sure everybody's doing great on this great morning. I don't know why I'm so energetic. Are you energetic? This is what's happening. I got a great guest coming for you. So I guess that's why I'm so happy to see you there. So sit back and relax and let's get started. And welcome to the new episode of The Jump. Good morning, y'all. Welcome to the Charles Matthew Show. Good morning, y'all. Broadcasting live worldwide. Good morning, y'all. Welcome to the Charles Matthew Show. Where it always feels good. Yes, and we're back, and I don't want to waste any time. I want to bring her right in. Let's introduce Maria. How you doing? I am well. How are you? Keeping safe out there. Ah, that is fantastic. So what you've been up to? I know business is slowing down a little bit, but how are you doing to keep yourself busy? Well, I mean, uh, as lawyers, we are always busy just because, you know, life doesn't stop and uh, clients still need us even uh, during difficult times and especially during difficult times, as a matter of fact. Uh, So uh, we have been able to uh, arrange it so that everybody is able to um, work uh, remotely. And uh, I'm uh, out here in the office alone, holding down the fort, as it were. Uh, but, um, you know, we, we're trying to keep uh, positive and um, I wish everybody to just hang in there. We'll, we'll get through this. Well, let's go back. I always like to go back. Tell us about you first. Where are you from? How did you get into this business? Let's know about you first. Well, um, I am from a small country uh, of Latvia, which is uh, now a proud member of the European Union, but was once a former Soviet Republic. And uh, I came to Canada in uh, 2000 and uh, I went to law school here and uh, graduated in 2007, was called to the bar in 2008. And for the past, well, it's going to be 12 years soon, uh, I've been practicing law in uh, the great GTA area and in Toronto more specifically. So let's backtrack. How, what did you do growing up and why did you just know that this is what it is for you? Well, I have to say, I I can't say that I always did. Uh, My uh, uh, mother used to say I'd make a great lawyer, but other than that, really, there was no inkling of uh, me becoming one, especially after the uh, Soviet Union collapsed. And for a while there, in fact, for about 10 years, it didn't seem like law had much of an application uh, where 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 I was. So I did not study law. In fact, I went uh, and uh, studied foreign languages. And my first degree is in uh, Sinology, which is the equivalent, I guess, of East Asian studies, has to do a lot with China. And uh, when I came to Canada and I started looking at my career prospects, uh, law just, um, I guess, appealed to me. And that's that's how I got into it. And it just it just took off from there. It did. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to take you back one more time. Can you remember your first case? Uh, well, um, well, you see, when you start as a lawyer, you usually start by helping somebody else. Okay. And I can, uh, I can remember the first trial I attended, but not as uh, uh, myself. But that's, I guess that leaves uh, most mark because once you've done it with somebody and you then have to do it on your own, it's not as uh, memorable. But, uh, of course, there are a few things that stand out in my mind. Yeah, and and then that's when you really get going, the bugs in you, and you want to help other people. Well, that is true. Yeah. So where are you located? Um, our office currently is at Bathurst and Wilson. 
Uh, so we're at 3858 bathers, but we are mobile. So we've been known to uh, travel around um, since for some matters such as real estate transactions and wills um, uh, and uh, well, some civil litigation matters as well. Uh, you sometimes do need to go and meet the client where they are just because they, they are too frail, too sick, uh, too elderly uh, to travel safely to, to the office. So we will travel, but our home base is at Bathurst and Wilson. Yeah, and that's one of the key things why I wanted to talk to you. Um, a lot of people, when we talked about, don't think about their will until it's the aftermath. And we want to make sure that people have some good understanding of what's involved, what they need to do. And a person like yourself can really come in and help them get all the details. Because what do you find out that the, we, we forget about a lot of stuff? Like what, what do we forget about that you realize that could help us in the long run? Uh, well, for one thing, we forget to have a will, uh, right? So, uh, and uh, what people don't realize is that um, even in a simple situation, uh, after a person dies, nothing really happens automatically. In other words, um, it's not because uh, the father died that the son automatically uh, gets, let's say, the house, right? He may well be uh, the only son. It may well be that there's really nothing complicated about the situation. But without the will, you're looking at um, jumping through quite a few hoops, administratively speaking, uh, before you're able to uh, uh, gain access to the property. Um, so having a will uh, is uh, the, the first and, and foremost uh, thing that you want to do for uh, your future planning. Uh, once you are in the process of uh, making a will, some people say, well, you know, I can do it myself. There, is, uh, um, there are things in, on the Internet that allow to do it for free. Um, you have to remember that um, the software that you use on the Internet or just a template that you got off of your friends might not account for all your personal circumstances. And the thing is, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and uh, unless somebody asks you probing questions about um, your circumstances, you might just uh, altogether not know that a certain um, circumstance has to be written uh, into your will in a certain way. Uh, for example, I've seen uh, quite a few wills, well, homemade wills, let's call them, uh, where everything is bequested to uh, the child. Uh, and yet there are no arrangements made uh, for the event that the child inherits while still under the age of 18. And that is very important because according to law, a child cannot inherit anything before they are 18. And therefore, the will that we create uh, would have appropriate um, conditions, which are called trust, testamentary trust, that would explain what happens uh, to the child's inheritance in the event they inherit before they reached age of 18 or age of 21 or age of 25 or whatever the uh, parent feels is appropriate. Because remember, um, the child can inherit uh, at age of 18. And if, let's say, a child is inheriting a house, it might be a, a fair bit of money uh, with the prices of houses being what they are nowadays. It could easily be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, if your will does not specify um, under what conditions and at what age the child inherits the money, uh, they'll just get the entire amount at age 18. And if you think about it, it may not be altogether <laughs> appropriate. So you're basically saying that all that money, one shot, will go to an 18-year-old. Yes. And, I, and I don't know about you, but when I was 18, I wasn't thinking about savings and everything else. Well, so that's all that money is, is given to the, the is a teenager at 18, one lump sum. Yes. And in the absence of a will and your child being a minor, when, God forbid, you, you pass away, uh, that is exactly what the government is going to do. Right. Uh, and that is what is going to happen if you have a will which simply says, I want the child to have it, but you do not put any proper provisions to ensure that it is distributed to the child in a, in a proper manner. Now, another thing that is very important and that people frequently do not know, not that they forget, they really do not know, is that in Ontario specifically, common law relationship does not equate marriage. 
when it comes to the will. Okay, so hold, on, so, yes. so hold on, slow down, because this is this is a topic that everybody says, well, <clears throat> that's my husband, that's my wife. We've been together, living together for five years. Indeed. So, so in Ontario, you're common law in the eyes of marriage, but are you saying not in the eyes of the will? That is correct. Yes, for okay. the purposes of the state, and in fact, also for the purposes of family law, which is which is another topic that your listeners may want to just look into. A uh, common law relationship does not have the same status as the marriage. I'll give you a, a scenario. It's real life scenarios, and they are, you know, the more often encountered that they really should be. But if you have a situation where uh, a man and a woman uh, live in a common law relationship and they have, let's say, a child and uh, uh, the husband, let's say, has uh, another two children from the previous marriage. Um, He passes away. He does not leave a will. Now, his common law spouse has no rights whatsoever with respect to his inheritance. So what is going to happen is that in the best case scenario, they owned a home uh, jointly, right? We sometimes when we buy homes and we're spouses, we're allowed to uh, have a joint tenancy. Well, anybody can really have it, but most frequently the spouses would own their home as joint tenants. And then the home at least will pass between the spouses, regardless whether it's a common law spouse or a legally married spouse. But... If it happens so that the house, let's take a hypothetical where a house was registered to the husband's name for various reasons that may be related to uh, mortgage considerations or any such thing, um, the, uh, the spouse, the common law spouse, might very well find herself homeless because she has no claim to the inheritance of her common law husband. That is something that unfortunately happens. It happens a lot. And uh, uh, people do not intentionally get themselves into this situation. Um, It's just that um, I guess the public is fairly confused about what what the difference between the legal marriage and the common law relationship is at this point in time. Now, other provinces have recognized common law on the same footing as the uh, marriage but it is not case in Ontario as of today, and that's something to be remembered. So if you are in a common law relationship, I do not really, um, uh, it's not my place to say whether you want to get married, but you definitely need to get wills so that everything uh, that you want to happen is spelled out. Because by law, by statute, it will not happen that way. Okay, so then question is how long does it take so say i want to write one today when is it legal in the government's eyes from today monday when will it be legal right so well technically you could just write it on a napkin and uh, have it signed <laughs> by two witnesses and it would still be legal now okay. if you want to be uh, doing it properly then usually what happens if you would call me today and say maria i do want to Uh, make a will. If I have some availability today or tomorrow, we'll hold a video conference. We don't meet clients in person at this time until, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary, of course, uh, to keep everyone safe. Uh, Now, uh, we would have a conversation which would last about an hour where I would ask all the probing questions that I need to ask in order to make sure I understand the situation correctly. Um, After that meeting, I will write you a letter to summarize everything uh, that we've discussed, just to make sure that everyone is on the same page. It's very important that no one misunderstood each other. Um, Once you have the letter, you read it through, you confirm the information that is in there being correct. And uh, uh, you also may want to make some corrections or some edits at that time or maybe add some information, change your mind about some things. Once you confirm with me that this is what you wanted to draft, we would then draft a will. Uh, You will review the draft. I send it by email. And then we would have a signing uh, appointment where we would sign it. I mean, I've done it uh, from the beginning to end as... uh, uh, in as little time as three days. I have okay. done it in two weeks. Uh, it really depends on how much in a hurry we are in that situation. Now, with respect to the last signing appointments, we're waiting now to hear from the court 
uh, hopefully this week sometime, they've taken up a case uh, where the lawyers are asking whether or not it would be legal to uh, sign the will over the video conference. And they have done that with an elderly client who, of course, okay. cannot leave uh, the home at this time. We're waiting to hear. I'm, I'm hoping that the decision will be favorable and we actually will be allowed, at least for the time of this situation, to sign the wills uh, remotely. Right. Um, if that is going to come out that way, then the person doesn't even have to worry about leaving um, the uh, safety of their own home. And we will be able to complete everything through video conferences from the beginning to the end. Okay. So the, I think the major question and everybody's asking in the society we live in, you know, we get divorced, we get remarried. Um, some people have two kids uh, um, in both families. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want you to answer the, this main question. When the husband or the father passes away and then the two ex-wife and the new wife battle a contention for the will, because some so they they leave most things to this family or to that family. How is it that the one or the other can contest the will, and what why can you contest a will? All, All right? right, we'll be right back. Immigrant Women in Business (IWB) is a nonprofit organization bringing together women from over fifty different countries around the globe. These women have now made Canada their home and share a common goal of providing value to their new sisters. Our motto of We Are Stronger Together resonates with all members and with a diverse membership of business leaders, entrepreneurs and community builders our goal is to make Canada better and provide guidance and leadership to those that follow. Senior care plans, distinctively customized, let's help your elderly loved ones live a fuller, more meaningful life by providing them with care tailored to their needs. We provide care that our clients deserve and strive to acknowledge individual rights and legacies, while offering a supportive environment for both our clients and our team. We at Divine Favor Senior Home Care think about family first. Call us today 647-766-5394. We are waiting for you. Whether you're kicking it in the sticks or kicking it at home, lounge in upholstery with a contemporary feel designed for relaxed living with the Brantley Gilbert Collection at Morris Home. Enter online at morrisathome.com slash win for your chance to win a guitar personally autographed by Brantley Gilbert or one of many Morris Home gift cards to upgrade your home today. That's morrisathome.com slash win for your chance to win from Morris Home. Yes, I just want to thank one of my sponsors, Divine Favor Healthcare. They do a fantastic job with the elderly. And if you need uh, help in this time right now, give them a great call. So before we went to break, I asked you about, you know, sometimes the wills get really ugly. You know, people are fighting about the wills and they want to contest it because they think, oh, the person wasn't in the right rind or they didn't do it properly. Well, how, how does this happen? Uh, now, one thing that you have to remember is the purpose of the will and the well-drafted will is specifically to avoid any kind of contention. In other words, you're drafting the will and you're consulting a lawyer to draft a will in such a manner that you can avoid a situation when your loved ones are fighting over who gets what. Um, having said that, the conflict can certainly arise. One thing that you mentioned that's very important is the issue of capacity, mental capacity, right? Somebody can come up and say, uh, look, uh, this person was clearly uh, not in their right mind when they change their, especially if they're changing their wills, not writing it anew. But even if they did write a new will, um, there might be questions about whether or not they were actually in the right state of mind to do that. Now, there, it's particularly important that you retain a lawyer to do that because a lawyer is uh, uh, trained to uh, have a conversation with uh, uh, the person, with the testator, and uh, um, ensure that the person is actually in the right, in the sound mind uh, to make a will. Uh, in the event that there is any doubt, a lawyer might recommend that a capacity assessment be conducted in order to ensure that the person is in the sound mind. And in that case, obviously, if the capacity assessor, who is a doctor, um, says that the person was okay, then there is very little that anybody can do um, to contest it later. Um, also, a lawyer will provide uh, an affidavit 
uh, attesting to the fact that the person did appear of sound mind at the time the will was sworn. So in other words, when you're hiring a lawyer, that is, um, well, part of the job of a lawyer is to ensure that this kind of argument can be averted. But you have to do it before, not after, because once the person passed away, it is now impossible to know what the state of mind was unless somebody was there to ensure that the issue um, had been taken care of. Now, uh, the other situations obviously are about uh, who gets what and why somebody did not get anything. Now, the will uh, is typically the, the last will of the person will be adhered to by the courts unless there is some valid compelling reason to uh, not follow the will. Uh, one of the examples could be uh, the claim for dependency. In other words, let's take an uh, example. Uh, somebody leaves um, um, money in the will to the adult children uh, from, let's say, the first marriage, but does not leave anything uh, to the minor child that was born in the right. subsequent relationship. Uh, the court is likely to intervene and say that this is not an acceptable way to do it. The reason for that being um, the minor child has a right to receive support, financial support from the father, whether that father be alive or dead at this point, and therefore you cannot disinherit that child. So then the the judge the 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 judge has an opportunity to look at it and say something's not right here. Um, we should be able to give to both families. Um, it would have to be something compelling, though such okay. as this will uh, interferes with other legislation that we have in place. In like other it's, all, words, it's all one-sided. So. You cannot, yes, you cannot uh, will yourself out of your child support obligations, for example. Okay, okay. Right? So there are certain things that you cannot, you cannot will yourself out of obligations that are existing. And if there are arguments to be made that somebody was entitled to your financial support, uh, for reasons of uh, justice, equity, or by the existing legislation, then obviously that will will be overturned. Again, when you are dealing with drafting a will uh, with a lawyer, uh, it is the lawyer's job to point these things out to you, right? And we would recommend to a client to do things in a certain way and not in a different way, specifically because uh, the will might be contested if, certain things are not taken into account. Well, minor children from other relationships right. being one example, which is, I think, uh, easy to understand. Well, you have, it, it's obviously you have great knowledge of, of doing this. You, you've been doing it for a long time. So if you're thinking about, you know, getting your will done and you have any questions, please do give her a call. And that's 416 416- 307 2070 that's 416 307 2070 or you can go to the website and there's a lot of information on the website and there it is and what i'm going to do is bring into the website because you you don't do this alone you look out like you have a great team we do have a great team we have been blessed by uh, um, lawyers and paralegals and uh, clerks and admin staff who are uh, helping um uh, this firm to uh, uh, to move forward, and um, you can get all the details on the website. All right, so let's talk about uh, your teammates real quick. All right, so right there. All and right, so we have uh, other than myself, we have two lawyers, uh, Sophie Liao, um, who uh, mainly deals with issues of uh, personal injury, so civil litigation. And we have Victoria Polikevich, who uh, uh, does uh, real estate and wills, and also civil litigation, including personal injury. And then uh, we have Anna Sarxian, who is a uh, um, licensed paralegal. Uh, she deals with uh, various uh, civil litigation matters on the level that paralegals are allowed to do so. She is also an immigration consultant. And uh, she deals with all matters, immigration as well. 
All right. So look right there. You have a strong team uh, for more information. Go to their website. Uh, there's questions and answers all on there. Uh, it, it says here in your language, you can change it over. So it's not hard to understand of any information you're looking for. So once again, if you want some information, you can actually email her. And I'll leave that on you for right now. And if you notice that, you know, once again, please do give her a call. Um, she's there to take phone calls, to give you some information. And this is a lot of information that I took in that I didn't know about. So, for example, like one, the common law. So a lot of people are like shocked right now. I can tell you that right now. And a lot of people are wondering about their will um, and then, and, you know, how to do it, when they should do it. And I guess in the time that we live in, you should never wait too long. If you have a family, uh, we, you need to get this done. Absolutely. Especially if you have minor children, you have a family and uh, you are a responsible parent, as many, most, all of us are really. We all love our children. Um, having a will, having proper provisions in it uh, will protect uh, your kids if something were to happen to you. All right. So at any age, you should start thinking about your about your will. Once you become a father, um, you know, you have some responsibilities. Start thinking about a will. Yes, absolutely. All right. So before we let you go, we always do the one thing on this show. It's called the shout out. Is there anybody you want to say hi to? This is your time to do the queen wave. You know, say hi to all your family and friends who are watching. Go ahead. Well, uh, you know, we haven't seen each other in such a long time, so I really want to uh, 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 shout out to uh, all my friends on Facebook and elsewhere and uh, my parents and my great team who are working hard from home and uh, to everybody who is maybe feeling a little bit blue, hang in there. You know, you heard the queen yesterday. We're going to get through it and we're going to meet again. All right. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. And I know this is great information that my, my listeners will follow. And for myself, I learned some great things. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me. All have right. Me. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, as she said, time is not an essence for you. If you have to, to make a will, please do give her a call. I'm going to bring her number up one more time. She is fantastic in what she does. So give her a call. 416 307 2070. Just give her a call and said you saw her on the Jump Podcast show. You want some more information. And like she said, the team is there. They do a lot of other great stuff. So don't hesitate. As I always say, you didn't have to watch what you did. We'll see you next time with more great guests. Thank you for watching. See you next time. It's come to an end, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, head over right now to Twitter and Facebook and like, share, and get involved. Join us next time. Please be advised that this podcast is meant for educational and informational purposes only and is in no way a replacement for legal or medical advice. The opinions contained within are solely those of the interviewers and interviewees and should be received as so. Those seeking help or advice are encouraged to obtain professional legal and medical services. Amazon is offering sign-on bonuses up to $1,000, plus get up to $20 an hour for select roles. The best part? We're hiring near you. So start now to take home something greater. New, higher wages with a sign-on bonus, a range of real benefits, and career growth opportunities in a top-rated workplace. So earn more and see how great pay and sign-on bonuses can lead to a greater life for you. Go to Amazon.com apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. Amazon is offering sign-on bonuses up to $1,000, plus get up to $20 an hour for select roles. The best part? We're hiring near you. So start now to take home something greater. New, higher wages with a sign-on bonus, a range of real benefits, and career growth opportunities in a top-rated workplace. So earn more and see how great pay and sign-on bonuses can lead to a greater life for you. Go to Amazon.com apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. Hey, hope you had a great time listening to the show. If you think I did a great job, please buy me a coffee. I still got a lot of work to do. We would love to hear from you, your feedback. So please click the link and leave us a review. You can help us grow by following us on all social media platforms and sharing this link. Once again, it's time for you to jump. Success is waiting.